Okay, Twin Flamers. <laughs> um, here's your tarot, uh, our tarot reading for the week, for the next week. Um, I'm doing it today, usually Saturday, the Sabbath, you know, um, I like to just chill and rest as much as possible, but, um, you know, I'm not like hardcore about it or anything, so if I feel called to do it on Saturday, then I will. And um, today is a very important Saturday because it falls on the 13th of the month, so um, Saturdays that are the 13th um, is very much the energy of the Divine Mother, okay? And um, there's actually, I'm subscribed to the Gnostic audiobooks, and they just put out a video today. Um, and it's funny because I was just thinking about my favorite um, asana, which is yogic pose. And I believe it's called the paramasana, which is the corpse pose because you just lay flat on your back with your arms and legs kind of, you know, spread out a little bit. And, um, you know, not too much, just, you know, kind of like that, your arms out, you know. And um, so it says to lay on your belly, on your stomach, in the most comfortable pose that you can, or your back, the, the corpse pose. And um, at the 13th hour, which is 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and um, meditate for an hour. <laughs> so we'll see if I can get to that or not but um, yeah does, I just wanted to share that's what um, that video it's called Gnostic Audiobooks and you can go to my channel and see you can just go to the subscriptions and click right on that you can see for yourself it's only like a t maybe a two minute video so check it out if you'd like so um, and that's very interesting because I got 585 yesterday with all those synchronicities which when you break it down in the mirror time code is 1313 because you add the bookend numbers the two side mirror identical numbers to the center which is the mirror itself so 585 5 plus 8 is 13 so 585 is 1313 change the settings on this so it doesn't the screen doesn't go dark so soon all right let's see what we get today divine mother energy really coming through lately so yep Oops, it is. That wasn't a very even cut. That's why I did that. Let me make it. Yeah, there we go. As even as possible. All right. So, all the white light of the unified rainbow, the God grain flow, the only flow I know. It's backwards. <laughs> Upside down. Keep being God. Here we go. Here we grow. Here we glow. Tower card wanted to make an appearance, so did okay. So it's the Divine Mother energy actually coupled with Saturn, because it's Saturday, so I mean we know that's you know the taskmaster, the father, you know, um Finger wagger. <laughs> oh, what do we got there? Okay, <laughs> very interesting. Tower double. 
See if the death card comes up, because that's the shadow work combo. Ace of Swords. Okay. So some clear thinking because of the tower energy and the devil. Facing the shit we don't want to face. Okay, that gives that's what gives us the clarity to move forward in our life with confidence and not confusion. Wow, thank you, angels. I love it when it's rhyming or an alliteration. So those two C words, move forward in confidence, not confusion. Okay. Okay, we're almost ready here. Feel good there. Right. Okay. We have the world at the bottom of the deck. So this holocentric feeling of wholeness, completion, um, resourcefulness, things being made available to us, and it's based on our perspective and how much we're willing to work for it. Especially with the cards that um, flipped out. So seeing things clearly is seeing how much is available available to you, but you have to be resourceful and you have to, um, you know, use that tower energy to clear things out that no longer serve you. And that comes from that shadow work of the devil card, okay? Making sure that you put your ego in check and let your spirit guide you. But in order to do that, we need to heal the past, heal old wounds, okay? So that devil, I'm really getting ego um, um, ego work the sh part of the shadow self that we need to work on is the ego and um, anything associated or attached to the ego needs to go that tower card so that we have the clarity to see the world in its entirety the resourcefulness that comes with the clarity is what opens the world up to you. Okay, it's your perspective. But you're not going to have a clear perspective. It's going to be clouded if you have a bunch of old trauma still um, that keeps, or, you know, an unhealed inner child, whatever you want to call it, that keeps um, sucking you back into ego, okay? Beautiful. Two of Pentacles crowning, Three of Cups at the center, Five of Cups, okay, I got that on my side in a personal reading. He got the Four of Cups, I got the Five of Cups, so. So that's at the foundation, which, you know, is what's propelling us to want to celebrate because we don't want to stay in that Five of Cups energy. That's for sure. Okay. A little bit different than my personal reading just because my energies are kind of a little bit different than the whole collective. So I'm just going to stick with what we have here. Oh, now we have this on the side of the Divine Masculine energy. Okay. Four of Swords. That keeps coming up. Another four. The Emperor. And two of wands, okay. Okay, we have the moon on the side of the Divine Feminine, not in, not in the cross here, but the three cards that are specific to the Divine Feminine energy. Okay, there's that clarity, the Mother of Swords. She's the most spiritual one in the deck. She sees things clearly. Okay, and that's right next to the moon card, so... She's using the energy of the Divine Mother and the moon, the womb, to get that clarity, okay? You have to 
you know, walking in the light when it's illuminated, that's real easy, right? The true test is, can you hold on to that light when it's not present and have it shine within you in order to guide you through the darkness of the moon card? Oh, and we have the Six of Swords. I think I called this the Six of Wands before, but this is the... Yeah, these are swords. I had to look that up in the book. I'm like, is there two Six of Wands? Wait, I'm not... Yeah, so... But either way, Six of Wands and Six of Swords are both a very victorious um, energy. It's a sense of liberation and freedom. Okay, and, and Six is, you know, that reciprocation... Um, this is kind of like the reciprocation you give yourself because it's mental, okay? It's swords, so um, going with the flow and stepping into that water even though you're not sure exactly where it's going to take you, okay, moon card, we're not, you know, it's kind of shrouded in darkness, but we have that inner light shining, okay, with the queen of swords. So we're not afraid to move forward, and there's really nothing to lose because if we're feeling this broken-hearted feeling, uh, we definitely want to move away from that, right? We don't want to stay stuck in that frame of mind. This lack, okay, remembering past hurts, you know, things people said or did that um, trigger you to feel some sort of way, right? Okay, let me just get a sense of everything here. Okay. Okay, well, let's just start with the base here. Between both energies, we have the Five of Cups. And that's, you know, not looking up to the light. We're looking down, down in the dumps. Um, not seeing uh, what the world's offering to us. That resourcefulness, okay, that the world card is at the bottom, okay? So, and that this goes really well. So, the Divine Feminine is having... Um, you know, ego be triggered because there's so much mental stuff here. But if we use our emotions the way God wants us to, because this is Major Arcana, the moon, if we use that highest elevation of that consciousness, um... We're at the Queen of Swords. So, using our intuition, with this Moon card, is what's gonna give us the mental clarity of the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords, okay, she's very spiritual. She has that masculine aspect of clarity because it's swords, okay? But coupled with the Moon, Okay, we have to see things for how they truly are. So that sometimes that takes a little investigating. Some, you know, sometimes you have to go within and investigate the self to gain the clarity. Because there's, you know, something that's making us stay in this. Um, and this is like the broken hearted card, but this is mental. Whenever you feel broken hearted, you're not in heart space, you're in your mind, you're in your ego. You're in ego space, ego space and time. And when you let those thoughts be the dominant, predominant thoughts that are going round and round in your head instead of positive things or things that you should be focusing on. You're focusing on the things you should not be focusing on, okay? The lack, 
the things that you we need to focus on the things that we do have and be grateful for what we do have because you know if we we keep thinking like this the three of swords what we don't have how people hurt us and took from us right those thoughts are going to lead to emotions of lack so thoughts of lack lead to emotions of lack so the queen of swords uses her clarity through her logic but applies her spiritual knowledge and intuition as well to get a very clear picture and that's what enables her to keep going with the flow mentally and not stay stuck three of swords five of cups so it's a combination of intuition and logic of rational thought okay and also being in tune with yourself how are you reacting how is what is your body feeling like when you're around certain people or situations or doing certain things or thinking certain thoughts okay Thoughts and emotions are connected. And then it's going to start affecting your physical reality. So the moving away starts in the mind. Everything starts with a thought. Before it's spoken, acted upon, before you feel any sort of way about it, it starts with a thought. So the feminine energy is very much in her head right now and not her heart but maintaining that connection with self that intuition is going to help you to free yourself from you know being bound by your thoughts see how it's all bound and wrapped up but these are sh sharp swords you can cut those ties at any time this is self entanglement three of cups three of swords so there's two threes next to each other two fours next to each other So we have two twos, two threes, two fours. Two, three, four. Everything in order. <laughs> so that's good. And um, yeah, one for each masculine and feminine. So two twos, two threes, two fours. So divine feminine, okay, th th those feminine energies. Um, you know, we're the watery feminine for a reason because that's where we draw. We draw from that. Um, our intuition, our emotions. Um, if we're caught too much in our head, our logical mind, that doesn't flow with our feminine energy. We have to apply the moon energy, okay, to have these thoughts be accurate they got to be accurate if they're not accurate then they're not accurate that's not even accurate to be thinking like this it's not even accurate <laughs> okay now we need accuracy in the way we think so we can't just be all logical masculine energy because that's going to take us right into ego and then we're going to be feeling this lack emotion. We're going to be thinking lack, feeling lack. So the feminine needs to, yes, implement a little bit of logic, that masculine energy. But not too much. Okay, we need to apply the water. Okay, and truth. Okay, water like in the Bible is is God's truth okay 
So it needs to be balanced because this is nobody's truth. This is the devil's truth and the devil's a liar. Okay? This is fear. This is lack. Holding on to the past. We want to move forward. I'm, no, I'm kind of staying stuck on this feminine energy because I know a lot of you, there. It, it's hard to be patient and we, we get triggered back into ego and I deserve better than this and... Um, and you do, but you have to give it to yourself. And the only way to give it to yourself is to know that it's available to you. If you're not aware of the availability of these resources, then it's like they don't exist. So... Now, intuition and emotion, okay, aren't necessarily one and the same. Because you can be feeling some sort of way, thinking, feeling some sort of way, but your intuition tells you something different. And it's always going to be telling you to keep moving forward, going with the flow, being in the now. That's what the Six of Swords is all about. This is the thing that liberates you. The way you think. This is the liberation, the rainbow right here. That's when we integrate all aspects of self. When we go with the flow, we're not afraid to go with the flow and be in the now, even though we may not see the whole path laid out. Okay, that's faith and trust. That's having faith. Moving forward in faith. Even though we may not see every step A, B, C, we may only see step A, okay? And then we, then we move forward in faith and God gives us step B and then step C, okay? It's on a need-to-know basis. We don't need to be overwhelmed with the whole big picture all the time. We just, sometimes we just need to know what that next step is and then the next step and then the next step and then the next step. But it comes from applying logic to your intuition or applying intuition to your logic, okay? And the Divine Feminine, we, we rely very heavily on our intuition. So if we're being too logical, this is the result for the feminine energy. If we're too much in our mind, this is where we're going to go to because, of course, we're very emotional, right? So we're going to be thinking about heartbreak and stuff. The Queen of Swords applies the intuition, the spiritual aspect of, of knowledge to her logic, okay? Or the spiritual aspect of logic to her knowledge, yeah. <laughs> so, crowning, we have the Two of Pentacles. You know, that's, that's this balancing, okay? And I'm getting... You know, if we don't balance our, our thoughts and our emotions, it's going to take our physical body out of balance. This also can represent the two twins in tangible, real life. So there could be some, you know, communication flowing back and forth of, you know, how far you guys have come and evolved. Okay, because it's the butterfly, so it's transformation. So maybe there's some communication happening or is going to happen between the two twins on a very tangible, you know, so email, text, phone conversation, um, in-person conversation, um, an exchange, a physical exchange that's very healing and balancing for both. And of course it starts internally first, right? So, but this physical balance is going to be affected you're going to be taken out of balance, your physical body, okay? If we don't have our mental and emotional body in alignment. So in and of themselves, the emotions, thoughts have to be okay. And they also have to be okay with each other. They're interdependent. Mind, body, spirit. Mind, body, soul. Okay, if one's out of whack... It's all out of whack, and you're going to see it in your physical body. 
or your physical reality, your home, okay? It will affect you on a tangible level. Your finances, okay? But that at the core of it is the Three of Cups. And there's three blackbirds. They each have a cup. So I'm, what I'm getting from this is they, they each have their spiritual connection to divine creator source, okay? And divine mother, because they're blackbirds, so that represents wisdom. Okay, we have the moon card over here. So, and they're black cups, so, I mean, I, they pretty much are all black cups, but it's like... We need to know this connection to our source, creator, and the divine mother. So our connection to Gaia, our connection to the earth. And we need to feel good about that and celebrate that. Because this is huge. We don't want to make this huge because this is just not a constant. It, it, it comes in and out. We come in and out of this state of mind, right? This connection with Divine Mother, Source, God, Creator, this Trinity, Mind, Body, Spirit, this is a real connection. This is actual. This is accurate. It's tangible and intangible. It's mental, it's physical, it's emotional. And when we know that connection and know that it's always there, we can always tap into the resource of that abundant love. It gives us the wisdom. It's like being telepathically connected to the earth, to the divine mother. You know, it's like you're on the phone with her. You just, you're getting information. You ask a question, she gives you the answer. But you have to feel connected. And how do you feel connected? By staying in your heart and being joyous, having joy, and celebrating life. And that's what the Divine Mother is all about. Life, birth, rebirth. This is our connection to the Divine Mother. All trinities that exist. And they're there to bring us joy through that deep connection, that knowing self. Through knowing self, we expand that outward and we know each other. We know God, Source, Creator, Divine Mother, Gaia, the Great Mother, the Great Spirit, the Great Self. <laughs> so that's very important. That's key. That's at the heart of it. So that's really what it, you know. we need to stay in our heart, that balance, mind, body, soul, mental, physical, emotional, um, divine mother, divine father, self, okay, this trinity is to be celebrated. So this is the main thing we need to focus on, okay, and that's a three, which is my life path number, but it's also, you know, the number of Christ consciousness, the Ascended Masters, so this is no accident that that is at the core, okay? It's very red, orange, yellow, so it's like very grounding, okay? This connection grounds you, um, gives you stability. Okay, and that's emphasized, you know, confirmed by the Two of Pentacles. That's stability. And this is adaptability, too. So, you know, um, when we have to move forward, there's a lot of adapting, acclimating to our new environment. Whether it's an emotional environment, mental environment, physical environment. All we have to do is tune into self 
and the elements available, the resources avail available to us through that world card, just tune in. To, it's all right there available to us. If we're working through sadness, heartbreak, resentment, ego-based stuff, right? The resources are there. Okay. Divine Mother. She's there to comfort you, but she's also there to teach you. She's there to hold your hand and guide you, but she's also the one that pushes you off the branch and fly, birdie, fly. It's time for you to fly. Right? This is using your own wings to fly. But the Divine Mother gives you that little nudge, that little push, but she gives you, she lets you know how powerful you are, that you have all you need inside you. And she knows it's there because she gave it to you. <laughs> That's how she knows it's there. That's how she knows you're capable. Capability and foundation. That's big. That's key right now. The way you build your foundation is what leads to your capability, what you're capable of. You're capable of the world if, you're, if you have the proper foundation. But that comes from balance. Being in the now, going with the flow, not staying stuck in emotions or mental, okay? Or physical, right? Because money and all, just having physical stuff isn't going to make you emotionally satisfied, or mentally stimulated, okay? And Daughter of Wands, um, I think the masculine energy got this last time if I'm not mistaken I could be mistaken so again the trinity this trinity energy is really coming up okay so even though this is the knave okay there's three blossoms on here okay and then we it's right next to the three of cups and three of swords and because it's like in the shape of a figure eight it's like karmic okay but it's like it may be the same person, but it's a brand new beginning, as if it were a brand new person. And this could be within the self, okay? So the masculine energy, and this is fiery, daughter of wands, so this is like the princess or the knave of wands. Fresh, clean slate, blank canvas, okay, and all the support. of your team and your guides, God, that Trinity. We need to tap into the Divine Mother. This is growth, rebirth, transformation. Okay, you got the butterfly there. We have transformative en energies. Because things are flowing, whether you want to step into that river or not, the river's still going to flow, all right, with or without you. Let it be with you. And also with you. <laughs> because you are the flow. So when you take yourself out of the flow, which is taking yourself out of the now, you lose touch with your thoughts, okay? Because they're not coming from heart-centered Okay, they're being based off of ego, just the mind, and not with the intuition of the watery moon applied. If we don't keep it in balance, one aspect or the other is going to get out of whack, out of balance, and it's going to affect the whole trinity. They're interdependent. So, we get stuck in ego, we're going to come out of that balance automatically. And we're you're just going to be, the world's just going to leave you behind. It's going to keep flowing and keep going and growing. And so don't fight the flow. Thank you, angels. Don't fight the flow. Very much divine mother energy with the two threes and not the core. I mean, right there, we have the moon card. And that reduces to a nine. Three times three is nine. 
And then the, I always see the Trinity here with the Daughter of Wands, the three. And you can see they're kind of, one's the biggest, second biggest, and the smallest. So it's like father, mother, child, okay? Mind. Body, spirit. Well, I'd say spirit is the biggest one because that's what you should let guide you. In the, and that's what the Holy Spirit is, is the mother, the divine mother. Three of Cups, Moon card. So you let your spirit guide you. Okay. So then your mind and your thought is okay. And therefore your emotions are okay. Spirit is the most important thing. Then the thought, then the emotion. And if we prioritize it like that, then we can stay heart-centered at that center of that figure eight. And everything keeps flowing just as it should on its own. But what we need to do is prioritize so that this all stays balanced. When you put God first, you put the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, you put that first, you let your spirit guide you, everything else self-prioritizes. But we need to put that first. Because we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for our Creator. Okay? And I just heard, yeah, that's why some, <laughs> so many are so mad at the Creator, right? They're like, why am I here? Well, see, you're just stuck in ego and you're fighting the flow instead of knowing that you are the flow. And that's when mental torment comes in, is when we forget that, that we are the flow. We are the now. We are the Divine Mother and Father. We are the Holy Spirit. We are the Trinity. We're definitely not Three of Swords and Five of Cups. Definitely not that bullshit. Okay, so those were a little bit... Oh, let me stretch my leg out here if it'll unkink. Okay, so those are a little bit tougher energies. That's why I wanted to really clarify or, you know, really dive, delve deep into that because we have, you know, that Three of Swords and the Five of Cups at the foundation. So, I mean, this is really what the Divine Masculine and Feminine are both feeling. Um, Emotions about the past hurts, past loss, past, you know. And it's fine, you know, if it comes up, feel it, heal it, move on. Don't get stuck there. Because when we think bad things, we're going to feel bad things. And then we're going to start, it starts creating hate, resentment, fear. All the real dark, lowest vibrational stuff, okay? That's why we have to remember that we're this at the core. We're joy. We're celebration. We're love. We're laughter. We are the Trinity. We are perfectly balanced. We are perfectly healed. We are perfectly whole. We are perfectly brand new in every single moment. We are the flow. And you need to know that you know that you know that you know. Thank you, Joycey Myers. I don't know how I know. I just know that I know that I know that I know that I know. And you can't question someone when they know, right? How do you know? Well, there's no, there's no questioning. When you just know, you just know, okay? And there's no question that can be applied to that. You just know. And it's beyond all logic. It's beyond all emotion, rationale, intuition. Knowing is having mastered your emotions, your thoughts, your intuition. Knowing that you are the flow. This is the knowing. Three of Cups. So when you're knowing, then you can be in your heart and you can celebrate life. It's joyous. It's to be celebrated. It's a gift, okay? It's not all this bullshit, toiling, head down, drudgery. That's not the gift of life that God gave us. It's this, celebrating, being joyous, okay? Living, loving, laughing. Right? There's an L on each one of these cups. You can't see it. Just kidding. <laughs> but one says living, one says loving, one says laughing. Living, loving, laughing is what I got from that card. So, 
Five of Cups, Three of Swords is definitely not living, loving, laughing. Okay. Let your spirit guide you and you will be Three of Cups, living, loving, laughing. Okay. But if you're letting your ego trip you up, you're going to be caught in low vibrational thoughts, which lead to low vibrational emotions, lead to low vibrational actions, which basically prevents us from acting is what that all boils down to. But we have to go with the flow. It keeps moving. We are the flow. Remember that. So there's no separating yourself from the flow through these low vibrational thoughts, which result in low vibrational emotions. So when you feel separate from the flow, that, that's your own ego stuff tripping you up. You're never separate from the flow. And when you do, you're stuck in ego. When you feel separate, that's because you're stuck in ego. And you, we choose that, okay? That's giving your power away, not knowing your power. Not knowing that you create your own reality, you have the power to make your life look exactly how you want it to look. Not based on what anybody else says, What? how do you want it to look? What do you feel okay with? What do you think is okay? You only have one life, as far as we know right now, okay? And you need to live it. No one else can live it for you. So, you know, don't let others affect your thoughts and emotions and get you caught in ego. Because that's giving your power away. That's saying that someone else has more power to affect your thoughts and emotions than you do. Tap into source. Don't don't tap into the past. Don't tap into what others say. Because they could be coming from ego, not heart, okay? If they are coming from heart and they, they really love you and they're trying to help you out and maybe it's not something you necessarily want to he uh, hear and it feels bad, to, but, you know, there is a way to relay information when you actually love someone and care about them and if you love them and care about them and you love and care about yourself then you'll you'll take what they say into account okay because sometimes we do need that third party um just like when a you know marriage counseling and stuff you need a third party who's not emotionally invested in this relationship they can you know they're not all interwoven in it so they can give you a better um you know outsider's perspective and give you another um and give you another perspective so you can uh see things a little bit more clearly so you know this could be you know reaching out to a friend who you trust or a healer or reader that you trust or a family member that you trust, um, a counselor, a psychiatrist, psychologist that you trust, doctor, nurse, neighbor, someone you trust that will give you good advice. Um, they know you, they love you, they care about you, they're balanced, they're in heart, because you don't want to be getting advice listening to people who are coming from ego. Make sure if you are getting advice that it's coming from someone who's solid and secure in who they are. Because their thoughts, emotions, and their guidance to you is going to reflect that. And that's the only thing that's going to help you. And if you can't find that, then you have to tap into Source God Creator and do that directly with source yourself you know but sometimes you know we, we do need that that outsider's opinion okay because like I said they're not invested so they can actually give you a clear account of how they see how they see things so sometimes you need to gain that perspective from another person, and I encourage those who need to do that to do that. I had to spiritually draft Sadhguru 
because when I was awakening, all this stuff was, I didn't know what was what. And, ugh. So, you know, um, sometimes we need to do that. Seek outside help and advice. But make sure it's someone who knows what they're talking about, that they're stable, they're not coming from ego, they're trustworthy in that. And they know how to be joyful. If it's someone, if they don't know how to be joyful, I don't recommend getting advice from them. And it's usually, if it's good advice, it's just confirming what you already know to be true in your intuitive body, okay? And you just need someone to confirm that your intuition was right all along. And, um, you know, that'll help you to be more confident in using your intuition and realize that, you know, thoughts and emotions aren't as important as what you know to be true in your gut. Okay? That's what the moon card is, your guts. <laughs> All right, so this side's pretty good. So we have the Daughter of Wands, masculine energy, okay? That brand new beginning, um, prioritizing things properly. Um, it's also a card of forgiveness and starting fresh and new. So, and living your life that way, okay? All is forgiven. You've forgiven yourself. You've forgiven others, okay? It feels like this fresh, new, vibrant start, okay? So this Christ consciousness, resting the mind, being settled in your mental body, centered, settled, secure in your thoughts, okay? There's the lamb, the Christ consciousness, the third eye. Okay, so the masculine definitely, and I, and I definitely got that energy. The third eye, the throat chakra, and the manipura. Okay, so the solar plexus, the vishuddha, the throat, throat chakra, and the ajna, the agna, the third eye. So, um, they're definitely starting to see things clearly, or are seeing things clearly. Okay, using that third eye perception, that's what I'm saying, that third eye, that third party might give you a perspective that either confirms what you already knew through your intuition, so that makes you feel better, or give you another perspective like, oh, I didn't really think about looking at it that way. You're right. Yeah, I need to incorporate that way of thinking a little bit more into my process, okay? So... And as the emperor, that's also a four. This is Major Arcana, so, you know, this is the divine coming in to the side of the divine masculine. Divine masculine energy is getting the message of, of how powerful they are, how much they control their reality. Your level of self-empowerment dictates your level of control over your reality. So if you don't feel powerful... You're going to feel like your life's out of control and there's nothing you can do about it. But this is the divine bringing them, bringing them, bringing the divine masculine a message of how powerful they are. How much control they have over their own life. Okay, see that sun burning? This is represents Aries too. But you see that, okay, red, orange, very uh, red, orange, yellow. That's the those three lower base, very masculine chakras, okay? The root, the sacral, and the solar. Root, sacral, and solar. Okay, so this is your, your solar body, your light body. The emperor is the king of kings. He dictates through sovereignty. 
the most high rulership, silver reign, that's super reign, that's the highest rulership, okay? And that's from God. So the emperor taps into the energy of the creator and anchors it down here. And his life reflects that. And that sun, okay, the lower three chakras, those are very much anchoring spirit into form. It's a very balanced, very strong, very vital, viral, very alive energy. This is self-empowerment to the max, okay? Maximum self-empowerment with the Emperor card. And there's two fours in a row, so that's very angelic, okay? They're getting help. And this, I just got initiate, initiated. So something was just sparked and initiated on the side of the Divine Masculine to get, give them the clarity, okay, through the third eye, the Christ Consciousness, to know their power, to choose, they choose which way they want to go. Here's your choice, the Two of Wands, which way are you going to go? You have the power to choice to choose. You dictate what the choices are. You think you can only go this way or that way? You only have two choices? Okay, that dichotomy, whether it's false or not, well, that's up to you. Because the world, there's many, many options. And if you think you only have two options, well, that's the choice that you made. And that's how much self-empowerment you think that you have. You can only do this or do that. So, I mean, but this can also represent the two twin flames, the path of the twin flame. So you can choose it or not choose it. It's up to you. I mean, it pretty much chose us, right? But even though it chose us, we still have the power to choose it or not. And if we don't, you know, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but we've been chosen, okay? Initiate. We are the initiated. So we've already been chosen, okay? So it's not even about choosing it. It's just about realizing your own power. Because you can reject it and be rebellious. Or you can accept it and see your power in it. Because that, that is a stage that we go through. And that, maybe the Divine Masculine is really feeling that. Like, bam, this is all happening to me. I feel powerless. I don't feel like I have any choice in the matter. This is all just, it's chosen me. I don't have any power. Okay? But then we come to a place where we realize that there is something very special about being a twin flame and there is something very special about being chosen is there's something very special about um being an example being an example of that perfect unconditional love being joyous knowing the world's your oyster the world card okay choosing what has chosen us Thank you, angels. That was good. Choosing what has chosen us is what gives us that self-empowerment. See, when we rebel against what has chosen us, we feel powerless. But when we choose what has chosen us, bam, we're the emperor. We're that damn emperor. So it's all based on perspective of seeing things clearly. If you choose the path that has been chosen for you, there's a sense of surrendering to the self. So you don't see yourself separate from the flow. So you're not saying, oh, I'm surrendering to the flow and I don't have any power or choice in this matter. No, you realize you are the flow. And that 
is very empowering. So when you choose what has chosen you, you become one with that. And you realize you are that. And I just cut the deck open to Father of Pentacles. That's the King of Pentacles, my twins of Virgo. Any of you out there who have um, masculine twin flame, who's an earth sign, Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus. There you go. And this also reminds me of the Charmant Souverain. So that reminds me of my father, my biological, my dad. <laughs> Okay, so um, that's a very stable energy for the masculine, okay? Very stable in a very tangible way. But it comes from feeling and thinking balanced, okay? Acting from that. And then you see your life tangibly balanced your physical body your temple okay your home your finances what you're eating what you're putting in your body the people that you're surrounding yourself with you don't want anything to interrupt this stability so you choose by having those people in your life or not by having those substances in your life or not by having those bad habits in your life or not you choose whether you want whether you have the stability or not and the father of pentacles is very stable okay he don't let no one fuck up his flow because <laughs> he knows he is the flow very practical down to earth stable energy okay So like I was saying, anchoring, okay, the king of pentacles, that just came to me, anchoring spirit into form, see the, those three colors of the three bottom chakras, that is where we anchor. Through the solar plexus, the sacral, the sacral and the root. Okay, knowing our power, healing ourselves and having self-control, the sacral. And then, and then the root is just the tangible expression of those. So divine masculine energy is pretty divinely masculine right now. And maybe the feminine is feeling her twin a little bit too much as far as the that masculine energy so it might pull her into ego a little bit so just remember you know if it feels kind of foreign or imbalanced it's like too much thought stuff remember to add a little splash of water splash a little cold water on your face with the moon card to keep that feminine energy balance okay because if we you know if we're feeling our twin we can get too much in the logical mind and when the feminine does that, we end up here. So we have to balance it with that feminine energy, okay? That flow, knowing you are the flow, okay? Moon card, six of swords, you are the flow, okay? But the queen of swords balances the logic, balances the intuition with logic. Or vice versa, okay? So, we can't be too logical. Remember, we have to give it a little seasoning, little peppering of the moon, okay? To remember where the flow. Or else we're going to get stuck in lower vibrational thoughts, which lead to lower vibrational energies, and that's all ego-based. Okay, I'm gonna pull a whispers of love because this is a quick message and yeah, we're pretty good into the time here. Just because I, I really wanted to be clear, I hope I was clear on the 
feminine energies, okay? Um, yeah, because we have very masculine, very feminine, so we got to remember that we have both inside. And to be physically, tangibly balanced, our body, everything feels good, we have to have the masculine, feminine balanced. Because we don't want to be too masculine because then, I mean, the emperor can be like dictator. That's that distortion, okay? We need the balance of the feminine. The trinity, the fiery feminine. And same with the the feminine side. If we're too masculine, too much in our thought, we're gonna, it's going to feel bad. It's, okay, so... Um, all that resent... I get resentment a lot when I see the three of swords. I... You know, you're thinking about past pains, and um, you you choose to allow it to keep bleeding. You can either let it heal and coagulate, and scar over, and heal, and now that skin's even stronger because it's scar tissue, or you can allow it to keep bleeding until you're anemic, or, you know, <laughs> or whatever it's called. So. All the white light of the unified rainbow, the god grain flow, the only flow I know, key being God. Here we go, here we grow, here we glow. I'm just picking one of these because they're short, quick messages and because this, um, this reading went a little bit long. But it ends up being about what I would do for a you know regular tarot reading, about an hour, so to really get all the messages and not um, cut it short, and really fully explain everything. It it always takes about that long. So all right, let's see what whispers of love card wants to come out and play. Visit us today. Hey, 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 hey. Is one going to pop out or should I pick one? Are you going to pop one out for me? Alright, we're going to pick one, I think. Alright. No, not going to pop one. There we go. Oh, two came out. All right, so be authentic to who you are, which is a 39, and then slow down, which is a 9. That reduces to 3. 39 reduces to 3 because 9s are self-canceling. Okay. So, slow down. That's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Slow down your mental chatter for the side of the Divine Feminine. Um, and may, maybe on the masculine side too as well because we want to slow it down so we can just rest our mind, right? And then see things clearly through our third eye. Because we don't want that emperor to get out of hand, okay? We want him to be thinking clearly so he can make the right choice. It's coming, it comes from knowing your power, knowing you are the flow on the side of the divine feminine and knowing... That you choose what chooses you is that's self empowering. You're an initiate. You've been chosen. So if you choose that, now you feel empowered and you can move forward. So slow down. When you are excited, you get ahead of yourself. Take some time to allow things to unfold. Yeah, we need to just be patient. Let things unfold according to divine will and divine timing. Okay, divine orchestration. See the path? It's a long and winding path. Okay? Just enjoy it. You know? It's beautiful. Look how beautiful it is. Just slow down and enjoy it. You know? Because thing it can be over in an instant. So we need to appreciate life as the gift that it is and celebrate it. So slow down a little bit. Stop thinking so much because you're going to be feeling too much and then it's going to take you out of the now out of the flow which is what we are we all are feminine and masculine we are this flow 
especially the feminine, okay? Which is in everyone, okay? So, be authentic to who you are. Hello. Authenticity. She's got a swan on her head there, okay? You are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel. We're initiate, initiates. So we have to know who we are. We need to know this. This is choosing what has chosen us is being authentic. When we reject it and rebel against it and turn away from it, we're being inauthentic. Because rejecting it, turning away from it, rebelling it, is like, oh, we have to oppose something. Okay, well, then we must fear it. Okay, and when we oppose, we're in ego. When we're the flow, we just know. We're knowing. When we, when we realize we are the flow, this is our deep inner knowing. When we have to oppose something, when we fight against it, that's because we're afraid of it. It's like fighting the darkness. There's nothing to fear. It's, it's all just your own darkness. Go explore it and see what's in there so you can heal it. So we don't keep doing this Three of Swords bullshit. Holding on to the past. Past pains, hurts. Okay? Alright. So, I'll leave it at that. I love you guys. I hope somebody got something out of this. I know I did. And, um... Thank you, all the benevolence that helped us. Angels, God, Source, Creator, and especially the Divine Mother. We love you. We honor you. We respect you. We are you. All right. Love, peace, and blessings to you all. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.